The following tutorial reviews the two-step calculation used to determine class and or cohort growth for the state pre-post test measure B. Typical quartile growth values used in these calculations were derived from BSD student data collected over the course of the past two school years. The following example demonstrates how the two-step calculation is applied after students have taken the Measure B post-test in the spring. The district will provide class or cohort reports listing each student's fall 2015 pre-test information, such as their pre-test quartile, pre-test scale score, typical growth value, and the student's post-test scale score. The final column, Target Met, is a simple algorithm comparing students' post-test scale score to their target. In the case of student number one, the post-test score of 15 is equal to or greater than the target of 13, resulting in a response of yes in the target met column. Student five, on the other hand, had a post-test score that was lower than the target score, resulting in a no in the target met column. The reports are generated by the district and will include all students that tested on each teacher's report. It's important to note that the state Measure B assessments are not adaptive in nature and without proper safeguards can penalize teachers whose students start in the highest quartile, in some cases providing typical growth values in excess of the total allowable points. Brandywine is cognizant of this issue and has built the algorithm to return a value of yes, target met, if a student that starts in the top quartile ends in the top quartile, regardless of whether or not the target score was met. Calculation 1 is simply determining the percentage of the class or cohort that met their average quartile growth target. In other words, the yeses divided by the total number of students in the group. However, it's important to remember that roster verification must take place prior to performing Calculation 1. In the example, the teacher had 30 students listed on his report. However, two students were excluded for not meeting the required 85% attendance criteria. So the teacher will use 28, the number of students on the verified roster, as the dividend. 20 divided by 28 is 71%, which equates to 71 points for Calculation 1. Pretty straightforward and standard practice. So why not stop here? Why a second calculation? The answer to this question is also straightforward and is based on standard practice in Brandywine. We have a long-standing tradition of valuing and celebrating student quartile growth. Remember the days of tracking student growth from quadrant 1A to 1B or 1B to 2A? We did so because such growth is significant in the academic success of our children and can easily go unnoticed and unappreciated. Calculation 2 brings specific attention to teachers growing students into the next or a greater quadrant. Again, a reminder that to be fair to our teachers with students that started in the top quartile and ended in the top quartile, Brandywine awards quadrant growth credit to these students for the purposes of Component 5. I'm going to run through now how Calculation 2 works. For the five students below, you can see they have listed their pre-test quartile and their post-test quartile. And the final column, points awarded for quartile change. For student one, they grew one quartile. They started in the second, ended in the third, and a single point is awarded for that quartile change. Student two started in the third, ended in the third, so no quartile change points are awarded. Student three grew two quartiles. Regardless of the number of quartiles, one point is assigned as the value. Student 4 is one of those students that started in the top quartile and ended in the top quartile. 
Again, the teacher is given credit for keeping that student in the top quartile. One point is awarded. And finally, student five experienced negative quartile growth. Even though they drop two quartiles, only one quartile point is deducted from the total. So for these five students, the overall net quartile change value is two. We would continue doing the same calculation all the way through for all 28 students on the verified roster. In this case, the net came out to 13 points. 13 out of 28 experienced quadrant growth. 13 out of 28 students, or 46% of the verified roster, earned quartile growth points, which earned four points for calculation two. The final score for this measure B is simply the sum of calculation one and calculation two. In this case, a total of 75 points. The rating would be determined based upon the agreed targets from the Fall Goal Conference. Final Comp 5 determinations for Group 2 educators is similar to that of last year. Two measures, either 2Bs or 1B and 1C, each weighted at 50%. A quick reminder that additional information on Comp 5 and other DPAS 2 information can be found on the staff channel of the district website.